Well, they met at the first time of asking in the first round last year. This year is the penultimate hurdle en route to the St. Patrick's Day final at the RDS. We are all set to go. Sam Holt is the match referee in charge. And we expect this to tick off at a rate of knots. Huge expectation around this game and on the shoulders of the likes of Willem de Klerk, who played at number 12 last year. He's the man in control as we get underway at number 10 for St. Michael's this afternoon. Time to settle a few early nerves and try and get rhythm in the game in very, very tricky underfoot and overhead conditions. Swirling breeze, bitterly cold, sopping wet. Neither team will be making excuses. Good take by David Lucy, the fullback, as he said, he got a first try in the quarterfinal. One of four against Clongos, and he kicks one down into Blackrock territory and asks the question of his opposite number, Charlie Maloney. Little tap tackle to bring him to ground. Rock's intention initially is to try and keep ball in hand. Tom Stewart in there worrying number two, a powerful player. Tried to strip that clear. Scrum halves need protection, they need time. Two in the backfield again, and Lucy this time plays it to a scrum half, James Sherwood. Good crossfield kick, but the cover is good from the Black Rock number 10, Conor O'Shaughnessy, but he's stopped by James Sherwood. Hi, Moss. Frenetic pace about the opening couple of minutes, as we expected, and ball in play time is there for all to see. Neither side going for touch initially, testing out the opposition back three and covering players. In they go this time to Mark Walsh up to that 10 meter line, still in their own half of the field and trying to exit with ball in hand for now. Get some decent field position. That was Connor Tonge. Use that! Coffee again kicking. We're going to see plenty of this this afternoon, try and force the error, force the issue, and turn the opposition around. Wait, wait, wait. Well, that could bounce anywhere. It's tricky, even on this. 4G pitch in Donnybrook. Oh, shot they see again, and this time he runs into a very heavy tackle from Coogan. The St. Michael's tight head prop. Coffee again, and Blackrock, despite the difficult handling conditions, have retained possession well. They're going through the phases. Tom Brig now, two tries in two games so far this year. And only go to the man I mentioned pre-game, Michael Colreavy, very influential in the second row. First penalty of the afternoon goes to Blackrock, two and a half minutes. Yeah, good play by Blackrock. Reverse Michael are just happy to play territory. They reload their backfield really quickly and find them grass. And Blackrock want to run a few phases, and then if they don't get momentum, they go to Oliver Coffey, who uses his big right boot to try and get territory. But they're starting to get a couple of positive carries there, and eventually Michael's infringing the breakdown. Sorry? Great receiver. Okay. Nice remark there. Yeah, that's a good carry from Tom Brig. He's been so impressive Next in this competition. Back two meters. Back two meters. And then they get a good latch on with a big second row. Corrivi. Michael's just over all the way in time. Gap is too big. The mark is here. Yeah, they're yeah. miles apart. Usually it's the other way around. It's uh, a really difficult afternoon for place wise. kickers and hookers. No surprise then that they go to the front, to the blind side flanker, Connor Tonge, who sets up decent field position now for Rock. Their real opening salvo first off in terms of what they can bring attack wise into that Michaels half of the field. Tom Brig again, we've seen him carry three or four times inside the opening, three and a half minutes, and on they come again. That's Kritzinger pumping those legs, driving through the contact, really impressive. Opening few minutes, this from Black Rock, looking after the ball really well in tricky conditions and changing the point of attack time, and again, running from deep on good angles too. Kritzinger again, twice that he's been involved in this move. Right in front of the post, Tom O'Reardon takes it on. In behind, switching it up to Mark Walls, the ambition and the execution to go all the way out to that far side to Mikey Yard. Finds his way in field, drive to ground on that 22. It's those same numbers on the back that are making all the big carries, the likes of Tonge and Brig and into midfield. Now they crash it up the centre. Michaels scrambling in defence but making some good tackles. 
It was Lucy that time, and eventually the contact and the big tackle brings the ball loose. Playing with the knock-on advantage, Rock now pretty relentless with ball in hand, and Mikey Yar. Lost forward, there's no advantage. Original knock-on by Blue in the tackle. Yeah, that last minute, though, showed the quality of both sides. Rock's power in the carries and their ability to bring yeah, some of their outside more. backs yeah. in, particularly Kurt Singer. He's a quality player. He missed the first game against Presbury, but yeah, Irish schoolboy, Irish under 19 squad. And he'd be like an auxiliary back row today, but some good defence by Black, by Michaels. Didn't panic. And got some good double shots on. Yes, he's a classy player. A couple of tries against Ross Cray. Yeah, coming on the inside there of a shot to see it. And then he makes a great line a couple of phases later. Off coffee, off the rock, coming against the grain. The Jamie Roberts type line is up the next one. But in fairness, St. Michael's good organization around the rock. Oh, there, that's, that's a great line, please. very hard to defend. And in fairness, it's a brilliant tackle by Ria Coog in the tight head. We're over here, guys. Sam Corrigan and Rory Brown in there making tackles as well. We've only played five minutes, but it's been uh, pretty relentless. As Bernard says, really good quality given the difficult conditions. Can't overstress that this afternoon. Very often the heavy rain isn't picked up on the cameras, but it is uh, thundering down as it has been all afternoon. The breeze is coming from camera right as you look at it. Crouch! Set. Rory Brown and Shark Angelo closest to it. And it goes from Black Rock and I walk in the manufacturer here with Mark Walsh. And that's the first real handy there we've seen from that inside line from Kritzinger. Short pass. Yeah, you're right. First hand in there. Just trying to do a 10, 12, 13 switch. Get him back running at that 10. The first Mike has looked well organized there. Yeah, it's hard to Let's explain how bad the conditions Let's are. We probably end up talking about them a few times during this game, but these players, their skill sets are really going to be tested. Crouch! Crouch! So James Sherwin waits, first put in for Set. St. Michael's. Got his try against Klongos in the quarter-final, was off the bench for the vast majority of last season in the Cup campaign, including that first game, as I mentioned, against Black Rock in the first round. Ball with one hop into touch just beyond that 10-metre line on the far side. Oh, good. Yeah, good steady clearance from the clerk. From Again, man. another South African-born player. Here now, OK, yeah. Very versatile, can play meter, okay. across centre line as well, but... He's been really impressive for them at 10 this year. He's fine. And like so many around him, representative honours at under 18 and under 19 for Leinster and Ireland schools, the under 19. Familiarity, breeding, respect, if not contempt between these players. They know each other so well. So much talent out there, as we say, every single time, including the man in possession, Tom Brigg, big ball carrier for Black Rock, important player. None more so than his captain, Oliver Coffey, who sets them off moving again with Tom O'Reardon. As I mentioned, that rock front row all on the try sheet in the quarter final against Ross Gray. And there, oh, great singer this time brought the growing great tackle. What a tackle from Lucy. They say Michael's number nine, they keep him on the edge. He just chops Kurt Singer down. And then there's a legal entry on the clear. Look at that tackle, perfect. You just see in the side there. as Jules Fenlon was going to go for the poach. Big Alex Muller just couldn't resist. Didn't have time to come in through the gate. But it comes to that impact tackle. Hopefully Lucy hasn't hurt himself. Yeah, that's a fascinating element. As I said, they'll have spoken about all the access points and angles of running, which players to target off what set piece. And that's a good example of it there. Kritzinger singled out. They knew he was the target. Silent entry by three ways. And ultimately the penalty There's will offer Michael's decent field position. The breeze that is swirling around is favouring 
St Michael's in this first half, no doubt about it. Maybe saw that on Oliver Coffey's kick over on the far side a moment ago, whereas this one is a good good gain of ground. Yeah, first line up for Michael's rock have looked solid in their first two throws, trying to close the gap. Michael's wanted to go quickly there, but because Rock didn't close the gap, or didn't close the gap, they couldn't. Oh, great take. Great delivery and a superb take in front of a, a very noisy That's one. Black Rock end here. Don't change it Doing their best to make life difficult for Tom Stewart, but the delivery was good. Now, can they get any semblance of full and momentum? There's your answer, but it's been taken over by James Sherwin. They pop it out into midfield. Black Rock player over it is Mark Walsh, but it's there for Michaels now to recycle and go again. Could if Sherwin. Lots of targets and lots of moving targets. Mikey O'Reilly is always a good one of those. They have lots of big, powerful players, big ball carriers. If Sherwin can find them, he goes to Sam Corrigan, the number eight for Michaels this time. Stewart available, they go instead to Coogan, the tight head. Good carry from him. Approaching the 10-minute mark, scoreless game so far. Through the phases and moving to the wide outside. That's Tom Stewart in possession again. Sherwin to Coogan this time. They line up again. Corrigan, supported by his captain with the scrum cap, James White, wearing number six. Mikey O'Reilly now again. Quicker ball this time for Sherwin, and they fold around the full corner a little bit quicker. Blackrock funneling back and trying to make Always sure they there. cover all angles, all bases. Ben Howard, this is really good stuff from Michaels. There's a real composure about these carries, not to mention all the power and the drive through the tackle. And White gets his hands on it, and they move it again. Three this way, and they go to the clerk. Brilliant tackle, huge hit from Maloney. Back to five metres out. Listen to the noise now around Energy Park. Brilliant stuff from both teams. Sherwin goes in and digs it out. Finds Stewart again. And Blackrock at the penalty. Oh, what, a, what a bit of defence from Blackrock. It was an excellent Ooh. attack from St Michael's. Really patient, really powerful. Went all the way across to the right side and then worked their way back. But this is the impact tackle. Just if he could have got out of the phase before, if a shot as he could have got out of the phase before, they had an overlap. William the clerk, sorry. And that, that impact against Blackrock on the front foot, and you see the next phase here. Just Curry goes off his feet as he latches on Tom Stewart, but brilliant defence for Blackrock, right in front of their home supporters, and they'll get a massive lift from that. All hands to the pump, and the decision goes the way of Blackrock after what some off. pretty relentless attack and some hugely resolute defence. And it was a Blackrock number that five, Tommy Butler. Yeah. He came in and just chopped Tom Stewart. You got to go low against yeah. Stewart. He's so powerful, but a missed touch here. Tricky one. Uh, it's got up the second attempt by Philip de Clerc. Wait now, wait, wait. He pumps it straight down the middle. Again, the option is not to kick straight back, this time from Charlie Maloney, who was highly instrumental in that defensive stand a couple of seconds ago, taken on now by Mikey Yar. Stepping into the shoes of no, Gus McCarthy, no. who lifted the trophy for Black Rock last year, Wait, and who is currently, of course, captain of an Ireland right. under-20 side, heading towards a grand slam. They will hope it's been knocked on, knock oh, on advantage, been picked up by... James O'Sullivan, they move it now to James White, the captain in the back row. Leave it up, leave it. Sam Holt, the match referee, calls advantage over as O'Shock, as he goes again. He gets his hands on the ball a lot, and this time he brings in James O'Sullivan. Coffee. Shrill blast, this one for a high shot, and after number. all the end-to-end -end -end momentum and defensive stance, we might see a shot at goal here just to settle things down and try and get some points on the board. Yeah, I'd say Coffey have, have a shot here, but it's, again, it's just a variety in Black Rock's attack. He's just Post getting goal. them on the front foot. That time they brought in James O'Sullivan inside a shot and see, and then they go back to the power game. Yeah. It's a penalty, but not new. Back 10 from the mark.
That's her first opportunity for some points on the board. They've built up very, very healthy advantages very early in their games so far, Blackrock. This one, a different story today, a real step up in class with the utmost respect to the likes of Prez Bray and Ross Cray. Two real heavyweights and every single point in the final analysis may be hugely important. Well within range and after a little consultation, up go the flags of the assistant referees on the first points of the second Leinster School Senior Cup semi-final go the way of the defending champions. Black Rock with their noses in front. Yeah, in fairness, they burst into life once they had an advantage from the, the clerk knock on and they have looked sharp in, a, in attack as well. And Very happy to get three points, I think, because this game is going to be very tight. James O'Sullivan carried that at pace and Ben Howard went out of his way to bring him to ground, halt any potential momentum. Use it! Cole Reavy protecting there for his scrum half and this one is swirling around and coming a long way to meet it was Lucy and a two-man tackle sends him back to where he came from or towards at least Sherman now under pressure and Coogan in there. Alex Mullen makes the tackle, couldn't quite wrestle the ball clear. <laughs> Sensible decision. Yeah, a good take from Owen Walsh. He hasn't been busy most of the plays, been on this side, but Back 10, the close shows here, Mark. he shows good composure there. And in close fairness, Michael's a very good tent just to bang it long and, and try and hope for an error or else back their kick chase to, to get that turnover. But Rock have been very solid so far. Not the most orthodox of touch finds over on that far side, but ball yep. is into touch, and it will be a St. Michael's yep. throw for Tom Stewart. Just hold up the throw, lazier. Awesome. How many have we got this way? 25 oh, points to 20 in the round one game between these two last year, and after that, it was a fairly straightforward. Route to the final for Black Rock before they saw off Gonzaga in a hugely entertaining and high scoring final. And Gonzaga, of course, await the winners of this in eight days' time. Mikey Yar sets it up for Oliver Coffey, and into the fray comes Tom Brink. Tom Stewart brings him to ground. Oh, shock to see now with lots of options and a really good read and a good hit this time from Fenland. Away comes Taj. Black Rock back row, extremely impressive right throughout this competition, and they've picked up from where they left off this afternoon. Oh, shock and see again, just pops one flat and straight into break. Quick ball required. Coffee now buzzing around the base of the rock, and the pass over the top was on, but it just wasn't quite executed. Yeah, they had massive numbers there, but because of the conditions and the, the blitz defense from St. Michael's. Larry Kirkham makes a great read there. You see here, this is a carry from Tons, very powerful. And then they get good clear out, they get back. And Michaels were short in defence here, you see just... Really narrow, Kirkham had three men to mark there, but he got up nice and high and forced that pass over his head, which obviously allowed the wind to take it. So good defence there without making a tackle from Kirkham. Yes, you could Crouch. almost hear him up here over the din calling for Boys. reinforcements on that far side, but they managed to Set avert a crisis. <laughs> Two front rows go down, and it's a penalty. Yeah, it's a penalty. This side, just Alex Mullen, just lost his bind on Ben Howard. So it's rarely the scrum decides the outcome against, you know, you can only push a metre and a half, but you got to be really careful you don't show any obvious infringement like that. Yeah. On the line again, please, voice. That's your mark. That's your mark. So Ben Howard in conversation, quick conversation with Advantage Stewart. The control. Advantage over. It wasn't straight. No. Blackrock have the advantage, now can they seize it? Coffey looks to get his troops moving again. Again, the 
seismic challenges and those big oh, hits, and it's Coogan this time, I think, Tom Stewart in there also with a tight head yeah. made the impact. Lost more in the ground. Yeah, great bit of defence there from, from St. Michael's. They'd lost the line out, but look at the two front rowers. Huge hit from Coogan and Tom Stewart there on their, up, on their opposite front row partner, Tom O'Reardon. I would be surprised if we see all six of these front rows today you know, go on to do greater things in, in Irish rugby. All quality players. Sorry? Just longer boy if you can. Yeah, real, real talent. Real Coogan still only a fifth year. Ireland under 18. So we spend a lot of time eulogising and admiring Set. the play of the backline players. Two very, very effective front Wait. rows. Again, there's huge power in the carry. Mark wait, Kniff wait, that wait. time, putting his shoulder on, to the wheel. Wind is picking up. Really difficult for those in the backfield this afternoon, and that's another really good take by Owen Walsh, who's made that look easy. That's two in a row. Mark, the last one, carries this one. Outside the 22. Blackrock leading as we approach the opening 20-minute window. It's uh, flown by. It's been pretty fast and frenetic. A lot of ball in play time. A lot of kicking, but generally it's been good kicking and the chase has been good <laughs> difficult for Gritzinger back he's there on the yeah. he's on the ground you can't take Rock that the penalty now the two South African board players involved in that Ten. lovely diving up there in the ground chip it from Willem de Klerk but Gritzinger gets back and just reads it and yeah Go. oh is it gonna trickle in the touch on that near side really good That's cover Curry, from Wood and then it was a little bit Sorry. Of a loose pass. Lost yeah, the referee made a big mistake there. He blew it too early. It would have been a penalty advantage. Or sorry, a knock-on advantage, and Rock would have been under the post. But just see the, the effect of wind and rain's having in the backfield. The Michaels That's winger wrong. Patrick Wood is brilliant to keep that in in field, but it's Kurtzinger making a tackle on Vinny Clerk, and he knocks it on in the tackle. Great field position for Black Rock here. So Coffey, the Set. captain of Black Rock, is poised to feed that scrum again. It's the assistant referee on this near side, Paul Haycock and John Carville, the ARs this afternoon, looking at... Two players this side. Look like the just feet of both feet uh, props just Fair slipped. Height, combined long. Yeah, okay. so many there referees have experienced in the front row, but Johnny Carville, the touch judge on this side, was a hooker for Beckton for many years in the AIL, players. so he knows, he knows exactly what a scrum should look like and be feeding the information to the referee. There he is. He had the closest Clouch. view of that. Now Sam Holt has come around this side to have Mine. a look at a particular little set too. Set. Good stability this time and quick ball for Brig and he's got lots of power and he pumps those legs. He had James O'Sullivan available. Michael's get the penalty and that will feel like a huge siege lift. Jack Angelo. Come in the side there to try and get to his big number eight, Tom Brig, on a clear out. Referee's been spot on, making a fair contest at the breakdown. Michael's fans are loving that. To see here, good carry. Yeah, straight in the side. Yeah. Get the one here. Good captaincy as well from James Blue White because he just said to the referee, look, it's a, a clear infringement and he suggested maybe not the first and that the referee should keep an eye on that or have a word. So both sides using all their experience. That's one from nowhere. That's a lovely throw from Tom Stewart to hit David Walsh at the back, given the conditions. And use it now. And use it, they do. Don't enter that Black Rock 22. Huge big high bounce on it. O'Sullivan, elusive, quick backwards. feet, well, that's been ripped clear, ripped backwards, Sam Holt in a good position to allow play to continue, nothing wrong stop, with the tackle stop, stop. either. Great bit of defence there from Mark Kniff, well lost. the Michaels 12, he's very physical. Rock come again, 
Again, it's a couple of carries, no real advantage, no change out of the Michaels defence. They set up the Caterpillar Rock and then the box kick up towards halfway, but it comes all the way back towards 10 metres. That's gone backwards now. Who can put their hand on it? Yes, it's the Michaels player going to ground that knocks it on. Yeah, the game could come down to something like that, a bounce the ball, a ball not trapped. And we saw Rory Brown to say Michael Seven, he was really alert to that opportunity, but just as he dives on it here, just knocked it on. And, and that would have been a brilliant ball for Tim Michaels to attack off. Make sure you're not trying to swear any way through before the contest. It's very hard to say what way the wind is, is going, it's yeah. swirling massively. James O'Sullivan, who's looked lively. Owen Walsh has taken a couple of lovely high balls on the other side. And Charlie Maloney with that huge Bind. hit yes. to hold out Michaels a few moments ago when Six. they were under the pump on their five metre line. Carried back. Oh, it's tricky. The passes absolutely have to be on the money, and this now could be a really big opportunity for Michaels. Yeah, rare error from Coffey, Oliver Coffey. He's He's been really perfect so far in this cup, but just this just dies at the, at the feet of a shot to see him. Michael survived the Black Rock scrum in their own 22. Can they score? Take advantage of this. They've stacked behind the, the scrum. Yeah, but Clark, Clark. David, David Lucy. Crouch! Bind! So Sherwin poise, which way will the Clark and Lucy go? Will they split? Down together, same ball. Will we get an opportunity to see what they've put into practice on the training yeah, paddock? It's the same message for both of you. Keep your feet underneath, good body height and bind long, OK? Crouch! And there you see the Bind. options. They need good stable platform. Now. Back. Ball's a little bit slow blue. coming back to the scrum half, but Sherwin has it now. He goes to the right hand side, and those two players in behind. The initial first up tackle from Black Rock was good. Michaels have it again, and Coogan was in to play scrum half now. Sherwin will find Ben Howard. Not the quickest of ball for the scrum half to work with, but that kind of dynamism in the carry will help Fenlon coming through at a rate of knots, the outside centre. That's the power that Ryan Coogan brings from tight head prop. Another huge carry from him. No let up from Tom Stewart oh, either. And this time they go again. Coogan quickly back to his feet, but look at that for a tackle. Tom O'Reardon in please. there, prop on prop, and this time it's Sam Corrigan. Maul! Maul called by the referee, and Blackrock have turned that over. Brilliant defence. Angelo, the open side flanker, gets the ball to the ground, but there was two or three involved in that effort to hold up the Michaels player. Tom O'Reardon. Now, can they settle? and make a good clean exit here again it'll be a wonderful defensive salvo from black rock if they can tommy butler carries and they're eight nine meters out from their own Use try it. line fatiguing game and difficult conditions and the charge down just goes dead Goal line. big defensive set this is a real arm wrestle when you get to the 22 and in fairness, oh Michaels are really well organised, they get some really good carries, but any time they get a little bit high, they get absolutely smashed Injury, back yeah. by a very aggressive Blackrock defence, and eventually you get a turnover through a choke tackle that was stripped. But that's seeing the pressure that Coffey's under there. But Blackrock would be delighted to have a goal line drop out, given how close Michaels were to the line, and yeah, this doesn't look great for the number eight, Tom Brigg. Hopefully he's fit to continue. Yeah, yeah. Super player. Yeah, he's had a, a lot of really big, strong carries in the game already. Looks to be in considerable discomfort around that right hip, I think. I fancy it'll take a lot to keep, keep him out of the game. This is the mall on the, yeah, the eventual turnover. One man high, two men, sorry, one man low, two men high. It's eventually stripped by Angelo, but 
great defence from Blackrock. They apparently haven't panicked, and more importantly, they don't give away penalties. You see so many teams five or six yards out, you know, after seven, eight phases, someone creeps offside, but they've been really clear to the referee. It's actually 22 drop out. No, it was so that gives them a good chance to two. get a little further up the field. Off. I think that's probably uh, Tom Brig that's gone back down again over on that far side. He's just tried to run off that injury. Or yeah, it doesn't look good. He's kind of be tough. He wants to stay on, but whatever treatment they gave him a few minutes ago obviously hasn't hasn't worked. And as he got up there, he just seemed as if his knee gave on him. Well, that would be yeah. yeah. No. Something is uh, is badly wrong there. You can see us two or three times he's jarred while receiving treatment and signaled to the bench that sadly Tom Briggs' afternoon appears to be over, so they'll have to replace him. That's a big blow for Blackrock. Super player. Connell Hodges is the player being ready to come in. It looks as though down beneath us. Big disappointment, big opportunity for. Connell Hodges then as well, eight days out from the potential final, but this one's so finely balanced, it's a long, long way out from calling that. Good wrenching for him, but every minute he's had in this cup campaign, he, he's shown what a quality player he is. A great opportunity for Connell Hodges. Huge disappointment for that young man. Being applauded off by the Michaels players as well, Tom Stewart and others, which is nice to see. And let's hope it's not as serious as it looks. Quality player. Forced off in the 28th minute now. Blackrock get us back underway from the 22 dropout straight into the hands of Sherwin, and he asks the likes of James White to carry and carry the do hard and straight. Nice little switch back inside to Patrick Wood. That's attempted the Ireland play. The Ireland scored off a little power play. Big carry up up the middle from the eight. And then it's in trying to get it free on the inside, but. Pat Wood, the Blackrock were well organised defensively. Ryan Coogan doing his best Finley Beelham impression. Just that little disguise ball back inside to the angled run. Left of the mark, left of the mark, not on the mark, okay? Here we are, set off that piece. Well, we knew it would be tight, we expected it would be very tight, and we knew that the conditions would have a big impact, and certainly they have, but they haven't they've done nothing to dull it as a contest. Set. Hold the push, Blue! Big push it is, too, from the Michaels pack. Transfer out this way to James O'Sullivan, and the ball is ripped backwards onto that St. Michael's side. And Philip de Klerk goes to ground. Sherwin now. Use it! The intensity in, in these collisions is, is off the scale. Touch. Yeah, if you've tuned in and you're a fan of big upfront battles and props and forward packs going at it, well. It's the perfect day touched. for that. It was touched back there anyway, yeah. It was touched in flight before it was touched on its way into touch on this near side, so it's a Michaels ball twice. Yeah, it was a pretty kick from Lucy to have the bravery to hug the touchline with a kick like that in this win. At the moment, it's massively behind St. Michaels, the way it's just taking a gust here in the commentary box. obstruction at line out time so it's a little bit of a let off for black rock looked like a good delivery from stewart yeah just tried a little shift drive down the front and your lift is in front they're driving me down okay 
the referee sends a double bank. So the lifter behind the catcher, he goes into the space. He got shifted in. It's, it's inconsequential because they've actually shifted off down the left hand side. So probably technically right, but quite harsh. Let's go. I'll manage that, Five minutes to half time, or there are voices as Mikey Yard prepares to try and get Blackrock off and running. They've spent a considerable amount of time in the opening half and are inside their no. own half of the field and yet they lead by virtue of that 14th minute penalty kick from their captain, Oliver Coffey. It's a measure of how well drilled they are defensively. Spilled forward again. Yeah, again, you wouldn't mind seeing at least a couple more seconds advantage there. Get us away from the scrum, that would be a lovely ball to attack off for, for St. Michael's. But I'll, I'll tell you when time's up, it's a bit to go, yeah. There's our mark. He has been consistent with how he refereed the, the knock-on by the clerk earlier on. Reset. Two front rows are down on the opposite side to the referee, so we'll have another look at that scrummage. Ball slow coming back to the feet of Corrigan. Be interesting, Michael's decided to play here. The last one in the 22, just the ball got Trout. messed up a little bit at the back of the scrum, which ruined the timing, Point. and they had to just use Kniff to get over the game line. But it's a nice position to attack from. Keep it up. So here they go. De Clark this time. It's a big, huge boot swirling around into the 22. And again, full credit to the Black Rock players in the backfield under that difficult yep. ball. I think the breeze is definitely stiffening, or else it's uh, swirling around gusts of wind. Yeah, by most. Definitely favouring Michaels, as you could see on that kick. No, ben Howard gets his team moving again. That's David Walsh over it. Sherwin gets them going with Stewart Leaving again. De Clerc again, he fancies a little chip kick in behind. He's put a little bit too much on it. Yeah, he's finding hard to find grass at the moment. Backfield for Black Rockers were very well covered. That was a great take from the left winger on Walsh, I mean, the ball is moving around so much in the air, the previous, from the high kick, from the clerk, from the scrum, and, but it's so hard for them to get out of their half now, it's probably good tactics for Michaels with that wind, to ping it into that 22 and pressure the kick exit. Let's go. Here's Those roles will be reversed in the second half quite shortly, and you wonder... Get out of the space. Can Michaels fashion the score here? Didn't score in the first half against Belvedere. Didn't score until the, I think it was the 46th minute of that game. So, won't be overly concerned. They've only conceded that one penalty. Remember, another big strong carry from James White, leading by example with that armband. And Tom Stewart, always a good option. Sherwin again. The clerk pulls on in a short pass. Huge numbers, and they don't need anybody else. Fenlon goes in, and Michael strike right on the stroke of half-time. Brilliant try, wonderfully manufactured, and they had so many options, and Fenland took the try beautifully. Yeah, it's a brilliant play, a little breakout play from the line-out, using James White to get him over the game line, and then it's Tom Short, and on the way back, just like rocket, too many guys on the open side, but the timing onto the pass from Fenland was perfect with Pat Wood outside him. It was going to take something brilliant to unlock. Both teams' defences, but Michaels are the ones to strike first. Real, real quality all over that try. Lots of options, lots of angles, decoys. Fenlon gets the score. Yeah, just worrying me for, for Michaels off screen. Just Thomas Stewart, the hooker. He's down getting treatment. And he looks he's walking away quite gingerly. That'll be a huge blow for Michaels if he's not fit to continue. Well, we're 
perhaps fortuitously for Tom Stewart and Michaels right on half time so he'll have lots of opportunity to be attended to but what a fill up that is for the Ellsbury Road side right on half time having seen a lot of earlier efforts repelled by a resolute Black Rock defence it's a lovely little backline move that gets Michaels in the ascendancy and the conversion from the man who scored the try is equally as impressive. And it's a seven points to three advantage at half time. Brilliant opening 35 minutes. Lots more to come in the second half. Tom Stewart will endeavour to be patched up, but Michaels have their noses in front at half time. It's in Michael seven, Black Rock three. 12. And in most people's eyes, whichever side comes through this might be marginal favourites against a very good Gonzaga side in eight days' time. But it's been such a, a physical contest and an attritional game that recovery will be key. Let's see if we get a, a look at this wind in the second half, even from the kickoff from Oliver Coffey, the Black Rock captain. The rain has relented for the time being at least, but safe to say it's not getting any warmer this afternoon. A bitterly cold afternoon. Straight down the middle into the Michaels 22 from the Black Rock number nine. Very into back. the hands of David Lucy. Big tackle from Alex Mullen. I think on his opposite number, Ryan Coogan. Make sure you're behind. Big early pressure. Tommy Butler there getting his hands on it. Yeah, the wind is massively in Blackrock's favour. You can just see in the system referee on this side, and it's going to be so hard to exit, particularly when you get pressure on your foot. Like Michael said there, great pressure from Blackrock. Nothing easy, and you fancy that Rock would contest that all day, which they did at the front, and it was that. Contest in the air, the hand of a Black Rock player that's knocked it on. Yeah, it looks like short could be done. He did him quite badly as he came out onto the pitch, but he is going to be a key man for him for the set piece. He's adapted to the throwing very well. And the lineup battle will be massive. We see Black Rock putting huge pressure in the air there. Minus trying to get big Mikey O'Reilly up, but well contested. I think it's that, yeah, it's that great foot of Tom Shore, that's the problem. Right knee already heavily strapped, of course, and uh, I think he's, he's struggling. To his huge credit, he's battling on for now at least. And it goes from Sherwood. Now, can they exit? Can they clear their lines under pressure? Drifting in field and now a pace Maloney and he breaks a couple of tackles. Got his hands free. There was an option for an offload, but it's wise to keep ball in hand and suck in defenders. Kritzinger. This is a pretty impressive backwards. start to the second half from Black Rock. They get a little bit of fortune there as it goes backwards. Ungolo sets it up now for Tom O'Reardon goes into the scrum half position. Alex Mullen there as well. Coffee back in situ. O'Shaughnessy two, Kritzinger again. Off your feet, White. Nice. James White is off his feet, leaves it alone, doesn't concede the penalty. Maloney again, tackle from Ben Howard this time. Coffee with O'Shaughnessy, taken on by Tonge. Michael Colreevy now two Michael's players over it. Illegally, says the referee, big penalty for Black Rock. Yeah, well, everybody, Black Rock. Great counter attack from the fullback Charlie for Maloney. And just see here, referee feels Tom, I think Tom Short might be had rights to that. A little bit earlier, he, that, he was definitely off his feet at the end, but Rock over the juggler into the corner. That's you. Yeah. So, Mikey Yar within touching distance of 
past swathes of Black Rock supporters and within six or seven metres, crucially, of that St Michael's line with the opportunity. Michaels don't contest. That's once. And they funnel it back from Ungolo to Yar and away he goes here. Yar for the line. And Black Rock have their try. In goes the hooker for his third try in his many games in the Senior Cup this year. And the second half, 34 minutes old, but it's been all Black Rock, and over they go. Yeah, immediate response. That's the first time we've seen their ball in action. Michael stayed down, as you said, Connor, but they didn't stop the back edge. And you see here, they get a lot of force from the front, but they need to pin it on the other side as well. And it just shears off rapidly here. And Yara at the back, he's very well in control. Get a close up in here. You see Michael stay down. They get a huge hit of pressure on this side, but that opens it up to go in field. Oh, there's a yeah, I think Michael's just a big truck and trailer there. There's, I think in hindsight, if there's a TMO that would be given, but good power from Black Rock. Just Mike Black Rock broke away and the ball stayed at the back. So there was that separation. Very difficult referees in fairness with no video. The strike is good. And Black Rock turn around that half-time deficit. It's good drill by Black Rock. They build it well, but just just see here now in a second. See there, there's no Black Michael's player attached to that in the front. Yeah. So taken in by O'Riordan. Use it. Black Rock execute Get what they will have spoken about with Justin Vanson and one, the various one, coaches one. at half time. Get the first score of the second half, put the pressure on. He's been excellent so far, David Lucy. That's a tricky one to take, and the wind's definitely a factor, as I said. The rain has dried up for now with the wind swirling around. Very, very difficult in that backfield. And in fairness, now Blackrock have a slight lead. They can afford to pin that ball in, into the Black Rock, into the Michaels half and test test the backfield. As we said, an attritional game, hugely physical. We saw the stretcher required for Tom Brigg. It's uh, Tom Stewart. His afternoon is over as well. I think it's Tom Begley who's come in to that St. Michael's forward pack for the remainder of the game. Big opportunity for, for Tom Begley. A lot of pressure on <laughs> every player on the field here, particularly to replace Mr. Come on and make an impact. These defenders are starting to have time to adapt to what's been so intense. Coffee, and this time to Mark Walsh. Good presentation for a scrum half, and Colour Challenge has had an exemplary game. He's always available. Oh, lovely little switch back inside to Mullen. And for such a big player, the tight head prop has got a good turn of pace if he had managed to break free there. Tons again on that blindside flank. This is Butler this time. Begley makes the tackle. O'Shaughnessy. They're starting to suddenly look quite menacing. Black Rock and purposeful in attack now, just using their big ball carriers, but showing composure as well. Colrevi through the legs. Good singer, good tackle. Nothing doing from the referee, and they can go again. Connor Tonge again on that blindside flank has carried all afternoon. O'Shock was a good zip in the pass, this time away to his tight head. Mullen again. And just spilled by Tom O'Reardon as he looked to set off. Yeah, it's a good defensive set from St. Michael's. 
Another big hit from Luke. James Sherwin on the edge, put in a big hit on Gertzinger. Todd Hagan forward, but eventually just there, O'Reardon just takes his eyes off. But Alex Mullen is so important for Black Rock in terms of the carries. And it's the variety of carries, he's topping up for inside balls, he's making the hard yards. Really explosive ball carrier. He's three tries in two games before this afternoon, and as I said, they've been broken ranks there. It might have taken a lot to stop him, even from that distance from the try line. Set! Hold the push! That's carried back. So direct a touch, not an option down the field it goes, and Michaels will just feel they're in a period of the game where they're not quite hanging on, but they just need to settle down, try and get some field position and get hands on the ball. They can't defend this relentless Black Rock attack. Well, Shotlessy back inside, and they're starting to play with a little bit more confidence. The big hits keep coming. Some hope wants a word here. So it's a yellow card at a time in the game when they're under real pressure. St. Mary, St. Michael's rather, and they can ill afford that. Yeah, the momentum's totally with Black Rock. And, you know, they need to capitalize on this, they need to get a two-score lead, but Michaels just need to make sure they don't, don't crack, just trust their defense, trust their discipline. Blue on the line. Yeah, it's the right call, isn't it, on the evidence of the replay. Blue in the line. Yeah, it's a clear yellow. That's mark on the line. So, Mikey Yard. Oh! That's one, moving sideways. And now he gets it back. Don't change your vines, don't change your vines. Hold the momentum, but Michael's That's getting bodies that, back there just to slow it down, the little switch back inside. They've tried that a couple of times from O'Shaughnessy to Owen Walsh. Good hands now, Butler makes a couple of yards as well. Great pace about Blackrock in this second half. And do they have numbers out wide potentially with O'Sullivan? Can he get there on the stretch? Really good effort to do so by the winger. He just lost it at the last moment. Oh, what, a tackle, what a tackle from Tim Michaels. I think it was been the third get across. Really good hands from Blackrock. Just going into the outer channel. I just think it's. Yeah, it is William the Clerk there, just does enough to force the knock yeah, on when it looked like there was going to be a, a try. Seven. Seven. So they might just need to bring on a, a prop here now. Doom, Doom McGuire will come on and take off the number seven, Rory Brown. Here we are, let's go. So it looks like Michaels are going to try and open up a little bit of space to exit here, use Kniff, just open up that angle. Horrible place to have a scrum with that wind against you. That close to the touchline. Very difficult, any purchase on your kick. You kick off first phase. Stop. He must be here. Yes, it's absolutely whipping down into that corner now, straight down the pitch. get out of here cleanly or at all they've even got work to get it out of the scrum they spilled it lost on the floor seized by the Use open side flanker for black rock angelo under real pressure now michael's pivotal few moments in the game potentially down to 14 players with a prop in the bin and black rock very much Short. in the driving seat in the ascendancy with the bit between their teeth and the Short. try line at their mercy and they're almost Use there here they go again on the secondary drive. Referees right there, says Short. Mikey Yar forces it back and they go again, pummeling that St. Michael's line. Use it! On they go again. Brilliant defence, sandbagging that Short. dry line. Referee 
didn't see it. There was claims that they got as far as the whitewash. Alex Mullen again, he can't quite get there. Corrivi is there. Tomo Reardon also, Mikey Yor goes over. Now, did he lose it forward? Short, short, did he get it down? Oh my God, there's a knock on there. The referee was behind a, a forest of bodies trying to get through to an Here's angle where he could see a potential try. Definitely seemed to go forward. Still there for Black Rock. This would be a massive score, and the referee is there to see it, and the referee gives it, and Black Rock have their second try of this second half. The forwards doing all the heavy lifting, pummeling that Michaels line, and after a staunch resistance, Michaels can't quite hold out, and Black Rock get the try. Yeah, relentless pressure from Black Rock. I think there's a knock-on in there, missed by the referee when Mikey Yard went against the grain, but eventually Black Rock they just stay in their system, just latch, really strong leg drive, and it came from the pressure they put on the scrum. They got the left-hand side up on the scrum initially, which made it very difficult for James Sherman to clear the ball, and from the knock-on, he just built 11, 12 phases. Incredible defence from, from St. Michael's there. So it's it's so hard to, to escape when a team like Black Rock will have so much power get that close to you. And now the follow for... St. Michael's is going to have to start chasing the game into the wind, having got two scores behind. A good strike from Oliver Coffey, and Conor Tollins deserves his try. He's been brilliant this afternoon. He's carried relentlessly, shoulder to the wheel, and he was next up in terms of that short carry, but that all-important carry and a brilliant try. May have got a little bit of good fortune in the build-up, but they worked hard for it, and in fairness, it's been all Black Rock in the second half, and they're going to get easy field position here now again. Yeah, they got more momentum. It was a great kickoff from Billy McClure. I think it was Ken fin or Jules Fenlon went up and got it, but just a bounce makes it difficult for the number nine. James Sherwin, and you see Black Rock just pounce on it. It's Tom O'Reardon with Mikey Yar. They get in there, a good steal. Ten-point lead with 20 minutes to go in these conditions, in any conditions, in this rivalry, is a pretty healthy advantage. Now, Black Rock are really ramping up the intensity now. Another little breakout play turning into that guys, seam. Good scramble defence from St. Michael's. So a couple of players requiring treatments. The two benches going to play a big role at this stage of the game. It's been uh, tireless stuff. A lot of real physicality, raw, brutal physicality at times from two really big, heavy, powerful pack of forwards. Huge task now for St. Michael's, given how strong the wind is and ten points behind. Before they even dream of getting back in this match, just need to try and get a little bit of momentum again. It's been all Black Rock since half time. They've pretty much been pinned in their own half. But they showed the periods in the first half what they can do with the ball themselves. So it's a good opportunity for them. Hold, hold the push. Sherman now and they've got to seize this opportunity that's a interesting kick could go any which way it was judged perfectly and the points fell to Michael as they need perhaps deserve a little bit of a break or two now they have to rethink the strategy I'm not sure that was fully intended and the kick was well taken swallowed up by James O'Sullivan Tonge again he's been a standout player this afternoon for Black Rock Michael Colrevi protects touch. it for a strong Got half. And Coffee quite happy to send it down. Brings the Michaels half of the field. Sherman trying to get his side moving right again now. with seven, Lucy. Stop. Seven, seven. 
He's running out. Maloney. Taking the groin by Finland, and that brings the penalty, which they badly need, in Michaels. Yeah, third penalty for coming in the side. Great tackle on Charlie Maloney there. He's so dangerous. You see here, I think it's Fenland, yeah, brilliant. And just as his winger, Pat Wood, is trying to get a jackal, he's cleaned out from the side. Further problems potentially for St. Michael's. A couple of players receiving treatment. One or two players cramping up as well. Friday the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day at lunchtime. The earlier kickoff time, if you're marking your diary to be with us for the Lancer Schools Senior Cup final. Gonzaga already there. It looks as though We're James up, Sherwin thankfully is okay. that St. Michael's rear guard held Belvedere scoreless for 69 minutes and Clongo scoreless for 55. They managed to hold their try line intact until the 39th minute here. Two tries. Mikey Yar and Connor Tonge, though, in the second half have Blackrock firmly in the ascendancy. Yeah, great kick from the clerk. He's very narrow angle to work with. And they have to win it and win it they do. Now, can they manufacture something here? Get the tails up once again to try and eat into this advantage. Good little switch back inside to Kniff from his midfield partner, Fenland. Now they go to Coogan and certainly he can carry. Good tackle, Mark Walsh. Sherwin again to Begley this time. Tenacity in the challenge for Black Rock, and they're forcing Michaels back to where they came from. Haven't really managed to corner any huge advantage from the last three or four phases. So again, they go to the boot. Number seven, playing a man off the ball. So Michaels have a penalty. Number seven, blocking the kicker, Henry. Yeah, I didn't see that live. Number seven, playing the kicker. So it's after the kick from the clerk. Uh, yeah. So seven hit the kicker race after the kicker. And then just Angelo just changes his angle yeah, slightly. That's where it lands. It's over there. Better from Jay Michael starting to throw a few shots now. Sorry. All good. With no let up in the physicality from either side. Two man tackle, driving the Michaels player back. Yeah, ben Hurd did very well there as he was in hip back, he presented the ball on the outside, so it didn't really affect the opportunity to attack Seven. in the next phase. But some sure huge hits coming in from Black Rock. Coming across them, okay? Interesting so, call here from yeah, the penalty. Going to take the points now and then obviously hope they can go and get a converted try. 54 and change on the clock, top left of your screen. You just wonder. Chances have been so hard to come by. Do they need the here. momentum really of a try first and then try and build from there? The ball is late on the kicker. <laughs> on the kicker. Yeah, James Sherman is going off. So yeah, going so for the corner. Yeah, they had the tee on because they thought they thought initially it was a bit closer to the post, but the referees decided the ball landed on the 15. It's a harder kick, and they're probably going to hit the corner oh. now, if we can find the ball. There we go. Confirmation that it's Chris O'Connor with the 21 shirt on for Michaels, in for James Sherwood. St. So Michaels ball has been very good all year. A lot of huge pressure on him here to win this. Looks like Blackrock going to stay down. Begley, oh, it's loose and knocked on, and it's a big let off. Big opportunity going to begging for St. Michael's. They didn't get that right at all. They yeah, just knocked on in there. I think the throw was good. 
Lost four in the line out. Scrum. Rock ball. So Coffee waits and off the base, Hodges. It's a thumping tackle again. It's a big, big hit by De Clerc. Yeah, sealing off by Guillermo. Just goes off his feet. It was a big hit to De Clerc. That's what you want Guillermo to have. And they get another shot at it. Didn't get it right from the last one, but it hasn't taken the wind out of their sails in terms of that's the best route back into this game right, to try and get off. this mall going. On your, arrive on your feet. And haven't spent most of the half defending there was, there was two that time. in front of the Black Rock supporters now to get a chance to attack in front of their own. They're going to go to the front. Great take. Oh. Now listen to the noise as they funnel it that's back one. to John Crazy. Begley. Good defence from Black Rock. Okay, and use it now, Blue. Chris O'Connor waits, so now he feeds those Michaels players. Oh, Can it? Did he get his knee to groin? Maul is called. Black Rock doing really well here. They're going to get the decision here. It seems from Sam Holt over the try line. Now back this way. Rock survive and turn it over. Down by Blue. Yeah, that's too big. Psychological boost for Black Rock and blows for St. Michael's. They couldn't get any purchase on the mall. They had to play away from him because there were so many men committed. Just gave Black Rock a chance to wrap up Kniff. And you see Kurt Singer and his back pals and some of his back row come in there, just hold him up and choke him up. That's the second time Michael's been held up in, in a key area of the field. Crouch! Well, we know what he can do Set. offensively. He's a, a big man, Luke Ritzinger, big on defence there again. Hodges now carries again. Again, he's brought to ground by the same player, Willem de Klerk. Stop appealing, please. Taken on by Mikey Yar. Lots of chat the way of the referee as well. It's all Use in the balance it. here, even 10, 12 minutes out. Michael, you feel, need to get something down this end from all this pressure. Yeah, it's a very good exit. Hodges look really dynamic off the back of the scrum, and then they play a phase back just to get a right angle for here. the clearance. And once again, Oliver Coffey just gives his forwards great relief, bringing the play down the field. Begley this time over the top, and they haven't quite managed to get all their ducks in a row at line out time crucially done in that far corner as well and they turn over possession give Black Rock a, an avenue out of that defensive situation into the attack with Maloney on to O'Sullivan on his wing further score now any score really you feel for Black Rock would put an end to the argument Kritzinger now with that big right handed fan on Kirkham Gets his pass away to Mikey Yar, his hooker, and he evades a couple of challenges as well. Hodges again. Coffee. Shocknessy over the top. Wait, wait, now wait. Massive kick downfield. Chris Singer with big space in the backfield here. I think that's where he was angling his kicker, at least that's where he was looking, just yeah, sliced it a little bit. It was down the side, now's a chance. Lucy now, he's got support, he's got runners, he's got Kniff, and Kniff's got a man outside, it's Patrick Wood back inside to O'Connor. O'Connor, can he get the off the away? Oh, that's brilliant! What a try, what a counter attack. There was big space in the backfield, but not down the middle. Kutzinger needed to hit a long left, a long right. 
and Moifitz has burst into line. Brilliant interplay. To see here, he's got a one-on-one -on -one with Angelo. Takes him on the outside. And then just fixed, draw the man. Pat Wood does brilliantly a step back inside. O'Connor stopped the bench. Brilliant effort from Charlie Maloney, but Pat Wood stayed alive. And great score from Michaels. It all started with Lucy. That's brilliant into passing. Great scramble, as I said, from, from Maloney, but Michaels are in in the corner. Really, really good try. And it brings Michaels right back into the semi final. into the teeth of a, a driving wind and rain. Look at that kick! Oh, goodness me, that is massive in the context of this game, and we're back to three points. What a kick. His other conversion was, was super, that's even better into the wind, and that's a warning shot to Black Rock. If they give away any penalties in 30, 35 yards, he'll have a shot. Great fight back from St. Michael's. Game on again. Particularly when you say the psychological damage of coughing up a couple of near tries done in that corner, then to go the length of the pitch almost on transition and counter attack. Brilliant from Patrick Wood, brilliant from Chris O'Connor. What a conversion from Fenland. It's always close, there's always drama. There's too much on the line when these two sides go toe to toe for it not to be anything other than an absolute classic with a place in the final. Up for grabs. Black Rock will they respond like champions? Hodges, oh, he had an option of Culrevi. That was a timely intervention. Player advantage, knock on it's blue. Coffee. Advantage over. There was a knock on in there. It's quickly over as Owen Walsh gets involved again. Tonge is over at Tom O'Reilly and takes it on. Spelled it. Knock on and the put in for Chris O'Connor. Yeah, good defense by, by Mike. It's couple of great tackles by Rory Brown, the seven. But at least from a back rock point of view, they're in the right area to feel, and it is quite hard to get up. Michael have used the tens, Billing the Clerks long kick as much as they can, but it's been so hard to find grass. He did so well to get that offload away out of the tackle. It's not easy coming fresh into the game, Chris O'Connor. Hold the push, hold! And there's the push from Blackrock, but they'll have to stop there. Michaels now will be galvanised by that try to be confident in what they can do. Howard brought the ground by Mullen. Another seismic clash of two big players. There is that big boot, collected by Owen Walsh. O'Connor, great tackle. Coffee to Butler this time. One or two little decisions now going the way of Michaels, but it's been brought about by that physicality. Yeah, and it just comes to a great kick chase. Double tackle from the captain James White and, and Chris O'Connor to replace with nine on Walsh who was coming back at real big pace. This is the turnover here. Ben Howard's been so busy, just put pressure on that ball and the ball just knocked on as they go to ground there. So Michael, they might play off this set piece a little bit further up the field. Jules Fenland there, top of year picture with the green boots has gone very wide into that left yeah, wing position. Bit more space, please. plenty of options on this near side as well. A little over five minutes to go. Second. Crouch! 
Feeds and it's at the feet of Corrigan. Oh, through the hands of De Klerk. Didn't knock it on and has regathered the situation. Cross forward. Knocked forward on the second occasion. Cross forward by Blue. Yeah, it's a little handling error from the clerk. I'll tell you. Here's the mark. Did his level best to recover the situation, but ultimately expensive. We would have liked to have seen what Michaels could manufacture from that situation. Crouch! Point! Set! And hold! So Coffey again, this time out to Mark Walsh. Owen Walsh available. Great line speed led by the captain James White that time for Michaels. They know that it's absolutely in the fire here. Leave it! Tonge, what a game he's had. Oh, it was almost an intercept. Kniff, I think it was, coming through. It's not going, it was here. Well, you don't want to throw an intercept to lose a, a semi final. Three minutes left, the referee said. Huge pressure. Kniff just kept shooting out of line. He catches that, he's gone. Time off. Tightest, smallest of margins. He almost had it, and he's gone under the sticks. Fairness was huge pace on the pass from from a shot to see, but just under three minutes. About uh, just under three. Yeah. And man, and well, oh, who'd be a coach? <laughs> yeah. Horrible position, his team have given everything. They have just under three. They're going to give a bit more. We're up against a very good side in Black Rock here. Two quality teams. White ball. Here's the mark. The Black Rock side that have scored almost 120 points in their previous two rounds, scored 17 tries. They've been limited to two this afternoon. Two apiece. And as it stands, Six. with two and a half minutes to go, it's that early penalty that is the difference. Oliver Coffey on 14 minutes. Michael's leading 7-3 at half time. Backwards. Didn't knock Off it on, feet. says Leave Sam it. Holt. Ball still Wait. there for Michael's. It's last chance saloon. Stop. Taken Leave on it. by Howard. Carry back. Thump downfield now there. Trusting their kick chase, hoping for an error. They need something. Wait. 68 minutes, and it will feel like a long, long way to that try line, or at least to get themselves into a position to force a penalty or a drop goal. They need to make their tackles. Uh, it's a good effort, really. Good work by Mark Walsh, buying his side a lot of space and time, using his footwork, Defense. evading two tackles. No, leave it. Turnover penalty now. And he uses it Front of the posts. What premium for that and the potential of a replay. That was not easy for De Clerc. He had to go full length forward to take that. They need to protect it, Ball secure it. Ball is loose. Black Rock players coming in, Hodges in particular, it's there for Michaels, oh, and they secure it. David Lucy did well there. <laughs> Corrigan oh, now. Lucy again, oh, there's nobody out that way at all. So the old oh, player was taken out late, so it's a penalty just where the ball lands into the Black Rock half of the field. And that's the chance Michaels were looking for. They've struggled to get any real momentum attack wise. So it's going to be a penalty. Back you go, please. That's the second time there's been a chip and a late tackle after the chip that have given Michael's momentum. No other seconds. option, really. 20 it's seconds. A, it's a long, long, long way out. Yeah, where is that? Before the halfway line. 
he says before the halfway line. Interesting yeah, so. to see that again. I thought it was a little bit further up than seconds. that. Only 40 seconds on the referee's watch. Let's see what. Oh, yeah. No, you're playing for me, too. Yeah, spot on, yeah. yeah. So this is how the game ended last year. I don't know if you remember in the first round. Yeah. Michaels had a series of lineouts five yards out, needed the score to win it. It's, it's, it's before the halfway. We're good to go. It's Mark here. Kniff with uh, ball in hand, and he's going to try and Number one. send this up. Late in the kicker. Gives it to Clark instead around the Black Rock 22. Try and launch something from the line out. He's got to find his touch, got to find a good touch, and he hasn't managed. He's tried to take a little bit too much off that, and that won't be that just yet. It could go any which way. Mark Walsh has it, pandemonium inside the last couple of seconds. Time is up, surely. Yar takes it away. Is it to be Black Rock in the final? All eyes on the referee, not yet, he says. Not yet. They'll have to go again with Coffey. Gets his kick away. Is there time for the line yeah, out? They have time. They have time for a line out, I think. Wow, what drama. Last play. Last play of the game, says Sam Holt, the referee. So they get the line out. They thought he would have got movement in the third went for a touch. Bit of chaos in there as he ought to get a couple matches. But they got one last chance. What have they got in their locker? Can they win the ball? Huge pressure on Begley's throw, and he oh. hits his target. Can this Michaels team execute under huge pressure? They've got no forward momentum from the ball. O'Connor has to play it, and they have to go again. Chris O'Connor in off the bench. On he goes to Corrigan. Big carry by Corrigan. O'Connor again, they're keeping it tight. Leave it! Kritzinger was over it, trying to get into jackal position. O'Connor again just pushes it wide. and. Calling for numbers out left. The option always, of course, of a drop goal. Keep your eyes on the clerk right, potentially in the oh, pocket. Available. And they set it up. They're going for a little bit more still. Oh, Corrigan. Right, now, will there. they come back the other way? Ball security oh, is key now. Hodges with a tackle. Oh, no penalties. Referee might have given one there. Slowing the ball down. Referee said hands away. Brown wants it played. They come back this way. So hard to look after the ball in these conditions, the way Michaels are doing it under the pressure of those big Black Rock tackles. O'Connor, James White, the captain. Mullen is in there slowing it down. De Klerk goes back the other way. They don't seem to entertain the idea of a drop goal to level it up here. Coogan now. Oh, there's a Black Rock player over it. He's turned it over. Mark Walsh brings the game to an end, and it's heartbreak for Michaels. Black Rock soak up all the pressure, and that surely not will be it. Back ten, please. Coffee kicks it, and he thumps it off the park in Donnybrook, and it's Black Rock, the champions, who are on their way to the final on St Patrick's Day to meet once again Gonzaga. Yeah, what a game, both. Quality teams went down to the last last seconds of the game in deep in injury time, and it was a huge turnover from Mark Walsh. Blackrock kept their discipline. Michaels were trying everything they could to to win a penalty at worst, but to give him a chance of a draw. But Blackrock stayed very much on the right side of the referee, and eventually Mark Walsh picked this moment to get in and get the steal. Absolutely titanic tussle, massive physicality, so much quality in. Atrocious conditions, it mattered very little, but what a game. St. Michael's 14, Black Rock 17.